In the War of 1812, the United States took on the greatest naval power in the world, Great Britain, in a conflict that would have immense impact on the young country's future. The French Empire, ruled by Napoleon Bonaparte, controlled most of mainland Europe. Great Britain was among the few nations free from French domination. With trade suspended between the warring countries, neutral America had a commercial advantage. Her merchants could supply both sides. The British restricted the American trade since they feared it was harmful for their war with France, and they also wanted to set up an Indian state in the Midwest in order to maintain their influence in the region. That's why 10,000 Native Americans fought on the side of the British in this war. Since Canada was a British colony back then, Canadians were also British allies. The Americans objected to the British Empire restricting their trade and snatching their sailors to serve on British ships. They were also eager to prove their independence from the British Empire once and for all. Closely entwined with the questions about the rights of neutrals to trade with European belligerents, the British practice of impressing American merchant sailors into service stands as one of the central grievances leading up to the War of 1812. By 1811, the British Royal Navy had impressed into service at least 6,000 American mariners who claimed to be citizens of the United States. In addition to the impressments, Americans were dismayed by British agitation of the native population on the western frontier. Congress declared war on Britain on June 18, 1812. During the war, both sides suffered many losses, and even the White House was burned down in 1814. The British were quite defensive in the beginning, since they concentrated their military efforts on the Napoleonic Wars, but after their victory over France in 1814, they started to fight Americans more aggressively. American national pride was boosted by the victories in the Battle of Baltimore in 1814 and the Battle of New Orleans in 1815. Thanks to those victories, the Americans started to call this war a second war for independence. The Battle of Baltimore took place from September 12th through the 15th in 1814. It was a British defeat against American forces during the War of 1812. Following the British occupation of Washington, D.C. in August, the British decided to descend on Baltimore, Maryland, the third largest city in the U.S., and a center of transshipment and industry. Previous British raids in the Chesapeake Bay prompted the local government to improve the militia and to enhance the fortifications. Major General Samuel Smith of the Maryland militia took command of those preparations. Meanwhile, the famous naval bombardment of Fort McHenry began around 8 a.m. on the 13th. During the previous evening, 16 of the British General's Cochrane's shallower draft vessels came to within five miles of the city, and by the next morning, five bomb vessels and a rocket ship had moved to within two miles of the fort and commenced firing. The Americans returned fire and the British vessels moved out of range before resuming a tremendous bombardment that lasted until the next morning. It is estimated that between 1,500 and 1,800 mortar rounds alone were fired, 400 of them falling directly on the fort. At 3 a.m. on the 14th, a 1,200-man boat assault on the shore west of McHenry was ready. However, fire from the auxiliary forts made a landing virtually impossible. Following the bombardment, Francis Scott Key wrote a poem about the action, which was eventually set to music and became the American national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. The British had not anticipated the strength of the defenses around Baltimore. For the Americans, the Battle of Baltimore served to reestablish their confidence and influence the peace negotiations in Ghent. The Battle of New Orleans was a series of engagements fought between December 24, 1814 and January 8, 1815, together constituting the final major battle of the War of 1812. In the bloody Battle of New Orleans, future President Andrew Jackson and a motley assortment of militia fighters, frontiersmen, slaves, Indians, and even pirates weathered a frontal assault by a superior British force, inflicting devastating casualties along the way. This victory vaulted Jackson to national stardom and helped foil plans for a British invasion of the American frontier. Great Britain had redoubled its efforts against its former colonies and launched a three-pronged invasion of the United States. American forces had managed to check two of the incursions at the Battle of Baltimore and Plattsburgh, 
but now the British plan to invade New Orleans, a vital seaport considered the gateway to the United States' newly purchased territory in the West. If it could seize the Crescent City, the British Empire would gain dominion over the Mississippi River and hold the trade of the entire American South under its thumb. The two sides first came to blows on December 23rd, when Jackson launched a daring nighttime attack on British forces nine miles south of New Orleans. Jackson then fell back to the Rodriguez Canal, a 10-foot wide mill race located near Chalmette Plantation off the Mississippi River. Using local slave labor, he widened the canal into a defensive trench and used the excess dirt to build a seven-foot tall earthen rampart buttressed with timber. When complete, this line Jackson stretched nearly a mile from the east bank of the Mississippi to a nearly impassable marsh. Here we shall plant our stakes, Jackson told his men, and we will not abandon them until we drive these redcoat rascals into the river or the swamp. The assault on Jackson's fortifications was a fiasco, costing the British some 2,000 casualties, including three generals and seven colonels, all of it in the span of only 30 minutes. The stunned British Army lingered in Louisiana for the next several days, but its remaining officers knew that any chance of taking the Crescent City had slipped through their fingers. After an abortive naval attack on the nearby Fort St. Philip, the British boarded their ships and sailed back into the Gulf of Mexico. When Congress ratified the Treaty of Ghent on February 16, 1815, the War of 1812 came to its official end. The conflict is now considered to have concluded in a stalemate, but at the time, the victory at New Orleans had elevated national pride to such a level that many Americans chalked it up as a win. Jackson, who would later ride his newfound celebrity all the way to the White House, was no doubt among them. Addressing his troops shortly after the battle, he hailed their, quote, undaunted courage, unquote, in saving the country from invasion and said, natives of different states acting together for the first time in this camp have reaped the fruits of an honorable Union.